Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. If you are listening very carefully underneath the music you might be able to hear a hideous sound. It is the sound of slimes. What are these guys doing in here? They shouldn't be able to spawn in this area and somehow they've made their way into this pool and they are making a right racket which was something we tried to clear up last episode by doing this. I will leave those guys for now but that is annoying. <laughs> anyway, in between episodes I have been busy. I have built the second side of this sugarcane farm and it goes all the way up to the ceiling which we can now see uh, because the void fog is no longer in the way. And there it is activating. So this thing has been working away although the chunks haven't really been loaded because I logged out not long after I built this and I've only just logged back in so you can see we do have a fair amount of sugarcane um, but this thing will be doing its job slowly over time and we should get a fair amount while we're doing what we're doing this episode because this is going to be the Q&A episode and we're going to do some caving. Now the sort of caving that we're going to do is actually to light up the caves rather than to gather materials. So one of the first things we need to do is go and find out where the caves are because I was just having a look and it was a little bit difficult to see down here. I was making x-ray machines but the void fog was getting in the way. So I think the best place to go and look from would be up the top here if we just wrong side if we go down our little trapdoor and round to the back there's an area where I think we can make a decent x-ray machine and we're just going to do the basic trick with the redstone blocks and the ender pearls and I've had a little bit of trouble using this so far so hopefully this goes well but all we have to do is aim there and walk forward and it didn't work which seems to be the pattern at the moment when using this thing let's try again and there we go. Okay, so an interesting view and some lightning. I can't really see the caves. There's a lot blocking off our view here, isn't there? Maybe we need to go the other side. Actually, that's what we'll do. We'll go out into the wastelands, the other side of that water stream, and uh, maybe we'll get a better view over there. Okay, there we go. There's some caves over there on the left hand side that doesn't really go too far. That will probably lead into a dead end, although it looks like maybe a little bit of a mine shaft there. And you can see there are some caves on the right hand side. Honestly, it's quite hard to tell where everything is seeing it from here. And looking at the bottom of the wastelands just looks ridiculous here. Just this little bit. <laughs> anyway, so we need to go over there by not too many blocks and then dig down and we will have ourselves our first cave. And so we have found our way into our first cave. Again, the point here is to light everything up, so I have brought a lot of torches with me. We're going to be looking out for coal, and I've got some wood so we can keep crafting them as we go. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to be picking up stuff like iron. If we get any valuables like redstone or better, then we will be picking those up. So first of all, I got a lot of personal questions, which I didn't really want to answer. You know, like, where do I live? What's my real name? And things like that. And I don't really want to answer those questions, and a lot of you don't really understand why. And I'm going to try and explain why first of all. I think it's a generational thing, you know. We've grown up in different eras of the internet, and today's internet is a very interconnected and open one, which is not something I'm particularly used to. Um, so a lot of you have probably got Facebook and Instagram, and you're just happy sharing with people you know all of your information through that and that's just something that I'm not used to. We didn't grow up with that. Uh, we kind of had MySpace and some other things a little bit before that but they mostly revolved around using anonymity and you know aliases and things like that. don't think we actually need that torch there and so it's just a generational thing and I don't really feel like revealing too much about who I am over the internet and I hope you can understand that and that kind of answers another question that a lot of you have been asking which is uh, the old face cam will you ever reveal your face do a oh my god a vlog video oh my god <laughs> that was crazy we should have a lot of that as we go around actually because we are lighting up this area and a lot of the caves have probably already been lit so we're going to be interrupted by mobs plenty so that cave ran out really quickly. I've just been x-raying to find another one and we're now in a mine shaft over the edge of this area and we were talking about the whole face cam thing. So it's kind of hard for me to answer this question because I just really don't have any desire to do a face cam video. I kind of like the... Oh, there we go. The anon... <laughs> I can never say this word. An anon anonymity. Ugh. 
Yeah, I butchered that one, but I think I, I think you know what I'm saying. I kind of like the enormity. I don't really, you know, have any desire to uh, do a face cam video as it is, and that isn't really an answer. That's probably not an answer that you want to hear. So I actually gave it a lot of thought, and I tried to, you know, dwell a little deeper into why it is that I don't care for that. And I realised that I actually really like the enormity. I like the avatar. I like doing these videos and kind of not being me, just being this little guy right here, because let's take off the armor. This is obviously not me, this is not what I look like, but <laughs> when we do these Minecraft videos we just have fun in the Minecraft world and that's kind of what it's about. So I feel like doing a face cam video would also take away from that as well, you know? And that's about the best answer that I can give you for that question. So next on the list is the name Asuma. Where did it Oh god! <laughs> Here we go again. Every time I try and answer a question, something attacks me and scares me. Let's get some more torches down. Maybe the mine shaft isn't the uh, best place to be doing a QA. and a um, But the name Asuma actually comes from the word music. Now, I must have mentioned this um, before, but I am a huge fan of music. Music is my passion, and that's why I chose that word to try and you know create an alias, a internet name or as I call it. <laughs> so I took the word music and then I put it backwards so it said sism and I thought that sounds a bit word weird so I changed the C to an X and it looked a little bit better and I put an A on the end and then the name Asuma was born and I very much liked it and I think I created that name back in 2006 or 2007 and I basically just used it for uh, playing on the PlayStation 3 which I used to have and then when it came to making a YouTube channel I just went with that name because that was the one that I was using at the time so I hadn't really put too much thought into it um, beyond it just being an alias that you know I was using I never really thought people would call me that name or know me by etc so uh, that's kind of how it is now my channel name is Asuma Void and the reason for that is because Asuma was taken and I was listening to a band a French band called Void Through Materialism so I just put uh, void on the end of my username at the time that I was creating it and I do believe we have now explored this little area here and I'm probably unable to find my way back out of it let's see uh, where we are with this okay it looks like we haven't gone this way yet so we will keep torching this thing up and um, so another question I've got here is what is my skin again let's do a little bit of F5 and have a look uh, this is a skin that was made by Raven's Child it is of or at least it's based on my old skin which is I do believe a direct copy from the game Doom now Doom is an absolute classic of a game because it gave birth to the FPS genre so all of these FPS games that you play today they will very much have come from the game Doom because that kind of just took what was somewhat of an experimental and new evolving genre the first person shooter and it just made it into a really awesome game and I've made my uh, left my armor offline um, one thing I forgot to mention is that I'm probably going to be uh, giving you guys links to stuff that I've already done videos that I've already done throughout this and Doom would be one of them if you want to see me play Doom I have played Doom 1 and 2 and I do believe an expansion pack as well on this channel quite some time ago so if you're interested in finding out what Doom is about and seeing those videos then I'll put a link to them in the description box so you can go and check that out and see what that game is but that's what my skin is based on and the reason that I chose it was because when I played Minecraft you know I realized like this is just such an amazing and creative game and it'll be one of my favorites and I thought about what my other favorites were and apart from Final Fantasy 7 Doom is the other game that I just absolutely adore I think it's fantastic every time you play it it's just got this gripping thing about it you know you get sucked in to the world of Doom and it's a really good game and so I just picked that skin and then Raven's Child came along and remade it for me and we have found a spawner and these pesky little guys are going to be a bit of a pain we are also outside the radius of the beacons now so I want to be a little bit careful here and actually just make sure I do this right we're going to get this thing lit up we're not going to destroy it because I might want to make a farm or something like that at some point which would be a pretty cool project actually a string farm I haven't done something like that in a long time and here he comes <laughs> By the way, um, I have a regeneration and fire resistance potion on me. I wasn't 
100% sure about how to get prepared because I hadn't been caving so for so long I thought there is literally just something really obvious that I'm going to forget to bring with me. Um, a bucket of water now just popped into my head of course. I don't have one of those. <laughs> so there's something I could have brought with me. Okay, okay, let's have a look at the next few questions. Um, how long have I played Minecraft for? I've been playing since March 2011. I downloaded a pirated copy of the game to check it out after a friend recommended it to me. And about six hours um, after downloading that and playing it for a little bit, I was like, I'm, I'm buying this game. This is well and truly um, worth buying. And yep, <laughs> that is almost an understatement. It has definitely been the best value for money ever. <laughs> Pretty much right there. Now I'm going to get rid of all of this string just because we can make sure this thing is lit up properly and then what I'm going to do is take a screenshot of it as well and what I do is I press F3 um, and then F2 so I get the coordinates on the screen and then whenever I want to find this thing again I can go through my screenshot folder and just have a look at it which is a really cool tip so uh, <laughs> hopefully you use that one and it's useful for you as well. So this next thing is a little bit of a story about how I got into video making. Um, it was probably a little bit after I had got the game, you know, I've been playing single player. Um, a friend of mine had it, we decided to make a server together, so I set up a survival server. We started finding people um, over the internet to come on and play, and then we had a little community, and it was called, at the time it wasn't called, but eventually became um, Geomine. So when I was on there, now this would have been probably closer towards um, August, September, that kind of time. So a few months after I first was playing the game, um, we were on there, we were just building farms and doing cool things, and one of the people who played on there, for the life of me, I can't remember his name, and actually, I'm going to go, f what the? That was really, <laughs> this is really spooky, I was half glitched into the block, and as it was flashing black and, and you know, normal vision, uh, the other social zombie appeared. That was really, really strange. Um, I'm actually going to go and see if I can find out this person's name, because I would just like to give them a shout out. I don't know if they even play Minecraft. They probably don't even know that I now make videos, but I'm going to go find their name anyway. So I found a backup of my old uh, vanilla server, and i got to ask you guys, would you like to see a world tour of that? Because um, that is definitely something we can do. I've got the world here. I don't think there would be too many problems of doing something like that. You know, it is an old world. We could run into something, but I'm sure it's doable. Um, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you would like to see that, and maybe we could do so. Um, but there are two people, and I can't remember which person it was. It was so so long ago who uh, sent me this YouTube video. So there is Chris Hanna and a guy called... Takasuki, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, they both played on my server, and I think it was Chris Hanna. He had this base, and underneath it, he had loads of slime. And we have found a spawner it is a skeleton spawner, and we are going to run in here because they ain't going to hurt me. That's right, guys. Now you got to fight each other. <laughs> Excellent. Let's just stand here. And who do you think is going to win? I think it's the gold guy, you know. He's got all that fancy armor on. <laughs> how long will this go on for? There we go, right, and now you die. Um, right, I'm losing my train of thought. There are so many distractions. Uh, we really don't need anything here. Maybe we'll take the bucket and the iron since it's already in our inventory. Um, I've got both of those records. And yeah, we're going to take the mossy cobblestone from here, aren't we? And we'll definitely have a golden apple and a name tag. And I didn't bring an ender chest with me. Something else you're supposed to bring when you do caving. So anyway, Chris Hanna um, wanted to make a slime farm and I went down and looked at like the area where the slimes are spawning. At that point I didn't really think I even understood um, spawning mechanics or anything like that. I just started building farms with redstone and he sent me this video. Um, the video was static777, I'll also link this in the description box. A tutorial on how to make a slime farm and it was really good excellent tutorial I followed it and you know helped him build this slime farm and you guess it from there I started watching YouTube videos I was watching uh, Doc M 77 I was watching his let's play in his world and I was following some of other uh, statics other tutorials and then I started to look around and look for more videos I got kind of interested in all the things that people were doing in their worlds especially Doc's world 
Um, that old world tour is something that's definitely worth checking out. He used to just do ridiculous things um, and really push Minecraft to the next level, and that was very inspiring. And, you know, I was starting to get that kind of idea, like maybe I could make some videos. Um, but what did it for me was that I couldn't find any other good tutorials out there. It was just statics tutorials were really well done, um, but no one else seemed to do them like that. A lot of people would film at night in the dark and they would, you know, mumble and not give you clear instructions or prepare anything before making their video. And it, it kind of annoyed me and I thought, you know, like, I could I could give this a go, I could make a tutorial because I can see all of these things that people are doing wrong when they're making their videos and I would do them right. So I gave it a go and then I went and posted my video onto Planet Minecraft. I also sent it to DocM and a few other places as well. You know, I put my name out there and let people know that I had made some tutorials and then people started subscribing and straight away I was hooked. As soon as I, you know, put that video out and all of a sudden people were subscribing, I was I was thinking about the next video and it just kinda goes from there really. Before you know before you know it, you know, you've made like a hundred videos and everything's just on the next level. But that's kinda how it started, you know. Someone showed me a tutorial, I liked their tutorials, I couldn't find any other ones that were good enough, so I started making my own and that's how I got into doing YouTube videos. So we ran out of mine shaft, so I found another one, I had to dig around a little bit, do some x-raying, and here we go. Um, so I just want to mention the first ever video that I uploaded, there will be a link to that in the description box as well. Alongside with another video that I made a year after I put out my first video, it was kind of like a, a year on reflection on what had happened, and it's like highlights and clips that kind of show you how the channel evolved and really got going, and I think a lot of you would find that interesting, so there will be a link um, to that down there as well and there was a minecart chest behind us wasn't there yet I knew I had to go back and check on something okay um, well don't really need any of that um, because I didn't bring an ender chest I can't pick up the little things like redstone so I'm really unprepared here actually what is the next question um, is it weird talking into a microphone it kind of is I find it's hard to get started like with this uh, q and I actually took a few takes doing a few different intros and I didn't really feel it. Um, but once you get going and you get into the groove, then it can actually be like really natural um, to just kind of sit and talk while you do stuff. And uh, I'm getting, I'm trying to keep track of where we're going in my head and I'm just getting so lost so quickly. Like we've got to backtrack and light up these. It's almost like the worst thing to do um, when you want to talk about stuff. So I guess my answer to that question is it is kind of weird. Uh, but once you get going, it's not, you know. Um, you know exactly what you're doing, and then it just becomes quite comfortable and natural. Right, that guy has been taken out. So the question after that, um, that isn't a question. That is something I've already mentioned. So next up, how did I join the Hermitcraft server? I was invited by Generic B. Uh, back then, there was a small community of us, like similar channels that were networking together, um, like Sokar, me and Corallis. Generic B, Doc M, and there's a few others in the circle as well, like Static, and obviously some of the other original members like Hypno and Biffa, and there's a few other people from back then as well um, that I really wish I could remember, but it's been such a long time, it's kind of hard um, to remember. But you just kind of end up in little circles in the Minecraft community, you know, um, similar channels, people that you talk to, and then other people, you know, all kind of links together. And so we were all from a similar area, and at the time, uh, Minecraft had sort of exploded with popularity and everyone had become aware of what they were doing, you know, really taking the LP thing to the next level by playing as a group on a server and it looked like so much fun. I think a lot of us really wanted to be a part of Minecraft or a part of something like it and when Generic turned around and said, you know, he's starting up his own server, um, I was very excited to be a part of it and so I was invited as an original member along with and Biffa and Hypno and Corallis and Sokar and Static and there were a couple of other names in there as well that I've probably forgotten and that is how I got invited I guess, not much more to say about it than that and I am really struggling to keep track of where we're going in here, there are so many places that need lighting up so when I'm doing this caving, I kind of create a mental map in my mind and here's a little something about me, no one asked, asked this question um, I'm really good at navigating and remembering uh, where I go, like maps and things like that I find really easy to read, I find it really easy to go somewhere 
and instantly, you know, uh, figure out where to go. So as I'm doing this, it's like I'm building this mental map where I can just sort of backtrack and and go back to the bit before and, you know, know where I haven't been. And that actually becomes really difficult to do while I'm talking. So I think what I need to do right here is kind of let go of that a little bit so I can just focus more on the talking because otherwise I'm just going to find it really difficult um, to talk about the things I want to talk about. So the next one um, is about who is the leader of Hermitcraft because obviously Generic B uh, left Hermitcraft and I guess I could say I am the leader at the moment however I feel more like a steward as such. So you know with Generic making um, Hermitcraft it was his to do um, what he wanted with you know obviously he probably put the interest of the group first but him being the leader and it being his thing um, he could very much do uh, what he wanted to do with it and because he's left things kind of fell apart a little bit uh, inside the community and that might sound a little bit bad it kind of was a bit bad there was a lot of inactivity and people who weren't really interested in what we were doing anymore and those of us that were still very much into the Hermitcraft thing we were kind of um, feeling that you know the server was dying a little bit there wasn't a lot of activity and certain people weren't interested in you know doing this anymore and because of that I decided to step up and try and take on the role of leader. Now as I said I'm more of a steward because I don't lead it in the way that Generic could where he could say this is what we're doing because you know it's it's my thing. I lead it for the community so I picture myself as a steward, I organize meetings, I push things in the direction that they need to go with like doing things like UHC and organizing events and just making the decisions when they're um, there to be to be made so I it's not really like proper leadership if that makes sense but it's a really important thing that someone needed to do and I think this is one of the beacons by the way let's go and have a little look let's be nosy actually I think when we get to the end of here wherever it is wow I bet this was like the opposite edge wasn't it <laughs> yeah look at that okay yeah that's a beacon room right there now I want to replace this with smooth stone which I don't have, but I do have a silk touch pick, so we will use that. I'm getting massively distracted. It is so easy <laughs> to get distracted. Right, let's put down these torches. I've also lost my train of thought. Um, so the way that that happened was I messaged um, a large amount of people within the group and said, look, you know, we need some leadership here. We need someone to make decisions and help uh, make things happen, you know, like events. And um, I put my name forward to a lot of people, and a lot of people were happy um, for me to do that. So that's kind of how I came into this position. So behind the scenes I do um, a lot of meeting organizing and when someone has an idea we kind of don't just talk about it, I try and make sure that something happens. So if someone has a cool idea for something they want to do um, then we try and put that into action and that is why we have been doing things like UHC and there's just been more activity on the server, you know lots of people making their episodes because we have um, that element restored again which I think is really important and I am ever so glad um, that I chose to do that you know I was really didn't picture myself as a leader sort of person but I felt like we definitely needed it and we needed someone to step up and take control within our group and bring some leadership and it certainly worked out really well because things on Hermitcraft have been um, very active and community oriented again and it's just been um, a really good thing so I'm happy with that and I'm babbling on again so I think we should move uh, move on to the next question Okay, so I've got two more questions here, and I also don't have a cave to light up, so we're going to backtrack a little bit and see what we can find. But we're definitely going to split this thing up into um, two parts, because I've got a whole bunch of other questions. Some of them are really interesting, actually, or at least I think um, you'll enjoy the answers and all that kind of stuff. So these last two questions, um, will you ever make a survival server? Now, I know a lot of you... Um, would be really keen to play survival with some of your favorite youtubers and there isn't really a uh, a kind of thing out there that exists where that can happen and the reason why is because survival takes a long time to play and when you're doing it for videos on a series like this you really don't have the time to play it casually as well and I know that really well because I've tried to do that I've tried to maintain playing it casually alongside um, doing videos and it doesn't quite translate it's a really difficult thing um, to do because whenever you're playing something casually as a YouTuber you're kind of thinking at the same time you know how does this contribute to, to making videos and the same thing goes towards making other games as well now I was also involved in a really big project I won't go into uh, too much details but some time ago we were trying to set up 
a kind of networked um, vanilla server community where we'd help people through the YouTube and through like YouTubers like myself find really good um, you know vanilla communities to be a part of ones where you can play on for a long time you don't have to worry about being griefed and that was all through um, you know like good management and having the right infrastructure to make something like that happen and unfortunately uh, we kind of got screwed over and that thing um, you know ended up being nothing but one thing I learned through doing that and we've got a big ravine we're going to explore that one in the next episode I think is that it is ever so time consuming to run a survival server now with a group of youtubers that are well behaved it's actually uh, really quite easy um, but with you know some younger players who may not be um, as mature and understand like greeting and things like that um, there's so much time and effort that has to be put into a survival server and I can't put that kind of time and effort into having um, a fan server it's just really not going to to happen unfortunately um, and that is kind of the answer of that question that was a really long-winded uh, answer as well which is unfortunate um, anyway right so I have one more thing one more thing let's kill this creeper and then we'll call it a day so I'm running out of caves to explore around here or at least I can't find some unlit areas and I'm thinking <laughs> I don't have to light them just while I'm talking so oh, as we speak about it we find it um, there is one last question and it is a very interesting question as I was reading it I was thinking what on earth can I say for this and by the time I finished reading I knew exactly what I was going to say um, so the question is if you could give one piece of life advice what would it be my advice would be don't let your friends tell you who your friends are now that might sound a little bit strange and um, what I'm saying is don't ever let or don't ever judge people or make an opinion about them based on what other people say because you will get the wrong idea about them now that might make a lot of sense to some of you and maybe if it doesn't I could try and elaborate and um, people can often be extremely emotional when they talk about other people and they will see things that are not true or exaggerated um, or just complete lies you know and maybe they mean to maybe they don't they're just being emotional but if you go by you know people based on what other people say about them um, then you might end up you know uh, making an enemy where you should have a friend I hope that makes sense <laughs> that should make sense um, and I don't think I can really say too much more about it now and now the water's just oh, knocking out my torches and I so I think we need to just wrap things up here and um, the second episode there'll be more questions and answers however if you want to put one in the comment down below uh, I won't see it because I'm going to be recording that right now but if you want to let me know your thoughts and opinions on what's been discussed and answered and talked about in this video then feel free to leave a comment and down below all of the things that I mentioned are in the description box all of those videos they are well and truly worth going and checking out if you're interested in any of them uh, but that is it for this episode so if you've enjoyed it please do leave a like it will always be appreciated and I will catch you in the next episode